Today I am going to read The Tale About the Virgin Mary's Child by Brothers Grimm. A poor woodcutter and his wife lived at the edge of a large forest with their only child, a three-year-old little girl. They were so poor that they couldn't afford daily meals anymore and didn't know how they would provide food for their daughter. One morning, the woodcutter, who was distressed by all this, went into the forest to work. As he began chopping wood, a tall beautiful woman suddenly appeared before him. She was wearing a crown of shining stars on her head and she said to him, I am the Virgin Mary, mother of the Christ child. Since you are poor and need and needy, bring me your child. I'll take her with me and be her mother and look after her. The woodcutter obeyed her. He fetched his child and gave her to the Virgin Mary, who took her up in heaven. Once there, once there, everything went well for the girl. She ate only cake and drank sweet milk. Her clothes were made of gold, and the little angels played with her. <clears throat> One day, about the time the girl had turned fourteen, the Virgin Mary had to go on a long journey. Before she went away, she summoned the girl and said, Dear child, I am trusting you with the keys to the thirteen doors of the kingdom of heaven. You may open twelve, twelve of the doors and look at all the marvelous things inside, but I forbid you to open the thirteenth door that this little key unlocks. The maiden promised to obey her command, and after the Virgin Mary had departed, she opened a new room every day and looked into the rooms of the heavenly realm. In each of them, there was an apostle in dazzling light. Never in her life had she seen such splendor and glory. When she had finished opening the twelve doors, the forbidden door was the only one left. For a long time she resisted her curiosity, but finally she was overcome by it and opened the thirteenth door as well. And as the door sprang open, she saw the Holy Trinity sitting in fire and splendor. Then she touched the flames a little bit with her fingers and the finger turned golden. Quickly she slammed the door shut and ran away. Her heart, her heart started pounding and wouldn't stop. So she had been scared, yes? A few days later, the Virgin Mary returned from her journey and asked the maiden to return the keys of the heaven to her. When the girl handled the bunch of, the, the bunch of keys, the Virgin looked into her eyes and said, Didn't you also open the thirteenth door? No, the maiden answered. Then the Virgin Mary put her hand on the maiden's heart and could feel it pounding and pounding. Now she knew that the girl has disobeyed her command and had opened the door. Once again she asked, Are you sure you didn't open the door? <coughs> mm. I'm sure the maiden denied doing it for a second time. When the Virgin Mary glanced at the finger, that had become golden from touching the heavenly fire, she knew the maiden was guilty and said, You've disobeyed me and lied. You are no longer worthy to stay in heaven. All at once the girl sank into the deep sleep and when she woke, she was laying, lying on the earth beneath a tall tree surrounded by thick bushes so that she was completely encircled. Her mouth was also locked, locked so that she couldn't utter one word, word and 
cannot tell lies. That is. Since the tree was hollow, she could sit inside during the rain and storms, and it was also where she slept. Roots and wild berries were her only food. Roots and wild berries. And she went out looking for them as far as she could walk. In the autumn, she gathered roots and leaves and carried them into the hollow tree. When snow and ice came, she sat inside the tree. Before long, her clothes became tattered, and one piece after the other fell off her body. So she sat there, completely covered by leaves. As soon as the sun began to shine again, she went out and uh, sat in front of the tree. Her long hair covered her all, her on all sides like a cloak. Alright, so, but one day during springtime, she was sitting in front of the tree when someone forced his way through the bushes. It was the king who had been hunting in the forest and had lost his way, and he was amazed to find such a beautiful maiden sitting alone in this desolate spot. <laughs> How lucky of him! So he asked her whether she would like to come with him to his castle. <laughs> However, she couldn't answer. Instead, she merely nodded a, li a little with her head. Then the king lifted her up onto his horse and brought her to the castle. Soon he became so fond of her that he made her his, his wife. After a year had passed, the queen gave birth to a beautiful son. During the night, however, the Virgin Mary appeared before her and said, If you'll tell me the truth and say that you unlock the forbidden door, I'll give you back the power of speech without which you really can't enjoy life. If you are stubborn and won't confess, I shall take your baby away with me. Brutal. But the queen remained stubborn and denied that she had opened the forbidden door. So the Virgin Mary took the little child and disappeared with him. The next morning, when the baby was no longer there, a rumor began circulating among the people that the queen was an ogress and had eaten her own child. <laughs> then another year passed and the queen gave birth to another son. Once more, the Virgin Mary appeared before her and asked her to tell the truth, otherwise she would also lose the second child. But the queen persisted in denying that she had opened the forbidden door. <sighs> Why she do that? So the Virgin Mary took the child away with her. The next morning, when this baby was also missing, the king's chancellor said openly that the queen was an ogre. Over, and they demanded that she be executed for her godless deeds. However, however, the king ordered them to keep quiet and refused to believe them because he loved her, his wife so much. In the third year, the queen gave birth to a princess, and the Virgin Mary appeared before her once more and took her to heaven, where she showed her how her two oldest child children were playing with the globe of the earth. Thereupon, the Virgin Mary asked the Queen once more to confess her mistake and stop lying. However, the Queen wouldn't budge and continued to stand by her, sto her, by her story. So the Virgin Mary left her and took away her third child too. Now, <clears throat> now the king could no longer restrain his chancellors, who continued to claim that the queen was an ogre. They were certain, and since she couldn't speak, she couldn't defend herself. Consequently, she was condemned to die at a stake. As she stood tied to the stake and the fire began to burn around her, her heart was moved and she told to herself, Oh, before I die, 
I'd like to confess to the Virgin Mary that I opened the forbidden door in heaven. I've been so wicked by denying it at all this time. And finally, and just as she, she was thinking all this to herself, heaven opened up right then and there, and the Virgin Mary descended with the two little sons and at either side and the daughter in her arms. The fire was the fire was extinguished by itself, and the Virgin Mary stepped forward to the Queen and said, Since you want to speak the truth, your guilt, your guilt is forgiven. Then she handled the Queen, her children, opened her mouth so, so that she could speak from them on, from then on, and bestowed happiness of her for the rest of her life. So this is the fairy tale for the Virgin Mary. <coughs> it is very similar to that to the Christian legends. And uh, forgiveness and lying and other stuff that uh, are very controversial these days. But don't forget, those fairy tales are written in 18th century and long before that actually and that is for today next tale another day